So things keep getting worse for Stellantis. Now let's let's check this out. So they have now begun their search for a new CEO. So Stellantis's chairman um, is increasingly dissatisfied with the situation in North America where sales have been slowing. And we've been talking about this for a very long time. Now, this current CEO, he's had run-ins now with a few different groups. One of the groups is its dealer body. So the, the dealers are very, very important to these manufacturers, and these manufacturers have to keep these dealers uh, very happy because at the end of the day, the dealers are the customers for these manufacturers. Now, you and I, consumers that are going to go buy a new Jeep, a new Ram, uh, we are not consumers to Jeep, Dodge, and Ram. We're, we're not consumers to them at all. We're consumers to the dealers. The dealers are the ones who actually buy the product from these manufacturers. And the dealers have been crying out for a very long time that uh, this uh, regiment here at Stellantis is not doing the job that they need to do to help these dealers move metal. And one big, big problem that the dealers cite are the direction that Stellantis has gone with their uh, their offerings, um, what, they're, what they're trying to sell to consumers. Now, recently they have shut down some shifts because of production cuts to their cheapest line of Ram 1500s, the Ram 1500 Classic. So these trucks are right around $50,000 and they are not the high grossing product like the, the higher end Ram 1500s or the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. So what has happened is this line has gotten completely cut and we've seen production shift into the more high margin products. The problem with this is this is not what these dealers are able to sell. These are not what what consumers are actually wanting. Another group that uh, this, this current CEO has had a big time problem or got a lot of backlash from has been loyal consumers because of just the reason I just stated. They are going to a different model. They have been over the last two and a half, three years. They are pumping money into high margin products. They tried to turn Jeep Dodge Ram into more of a luxury brand, and they're not that. And I feel like this has been a big reason why the North American side of this company has really suffered so much because they're getting away from what their customer base used to love and really cherish from these brands. And no longer they're, they're going to more of a luxury brand, high cost, high price. That's what they want to make. The Jeep Grand uh, Wagoneer is the, it's just the biggest example of this. I've recently been to a Jeep Dodge Ram dealership and they had stacks and stacks of these uh, <laughs> Grand Wagoneers. One of them was like $126,000. That's not what people are wanting. And, and people are going to spend that kind of money. They're probably not going to Jeep to spend that kind of money. They're going to look probably towards your Lexus, more of your higher end models. Um, and Jeep is not recognized as that yet. And But this is what the CEO wanted to go towards. But I, I think he's really failed in this. And this is why a lot of these groups are not very happy with him in the direction that he's taking the company. And this is why, okay, they're looking for their successor. Now, they're not just outright firing him. There's this is he's not out right now. His contract ends in 2026. And what they're saying by looking for his successor is that, okay, when his co contract's up, He's he's not back here, and the the chairman is uh, they're they're saying that okay they they haven't been happy with the direction, so we're not going to keep um what, what we got going right now because what we got going right now is not working, and you got to go from the top down, and the top needs to change. But we're not getting a change until 2026. So this dude, the CEO, already knows he's got one foot out the door. So obviously they're not going to be any kind of big changes coming out of Stellantis over the next year and a half because why why would he try to uh, really shake the boat uh, when he knows he's got his uh, his foot out the door? So another big group that's been heavily dissatisfied with uh, the current uh, regiment is uh, is the shareholders. So there's been a big backlash from the shareholders because they feel like the executives have actually deceived um, the uh, the holders of the company, the shareholders, um, because they were uh, painting some rosy picture of how well the company was doing, how much money that the company was making. And then our last quarter um, earnings report came out and Jeep, 
Dodge Ram, they're like, okay, maybe things are not so good. Dealerships are starting to turn down allocations. Our sales, especially in North America, are not doing great. And now we're seeing that uh, that these shareholders are, are having a big problem with this. And this is one group that you cannot anger as an executive because they own your company. Those are your bosses at that point. The CEO might be the highest ranking um, official in the actual company, but he has a boss. The shareholders are his boss. And if the shareholders aren't happy, then the CEO is not going to be able to stay there very long. Um, as long as he keeps doing the same thing that uh, seemingly looks like he's just basically running the company into the ground. So what's interesting about all of this is that it's not necessarily just all his fault. Now, a lot of the blame, it's all top, top down, right? So a lot of the blame is going to go on the CEO's shoulders. But just recently, I've been to the same Jeep Dodge Ram dealership and on every one of their vehicles that are stacking up and they have tons of them, they have rows and rows and rows of Ram 1500s. They have rows and rows and rows of Jeep Wagoneers. They have tons of Jeep Cherokees. But on every every one of these vehicles, there is at least about a $3,000 markup. So all of the blame does not need to fall on the CEO's shoulders. Once he gets the vehicles, once Stellantis gets these vehicles out to the dealers, they really don't have a whole lot of control. The dealers can do whatever they want to, even in this environment right now where a lot of these franchise Jeep Dodge Ram dealers are crying to Stellantis to be able to do something to help them out. They're not helping themselves out. They're still stacking these add-ons on top of these uh, cars. Now, once you go into the actual showroom and start talking to one of the salesperson, the um, the uh, the add-ons, the markups, just they go away just like this. I know this because I went to the same uh, owner of the uh, dealership group um, into a, a Honda, a Honda store under the same franchise, and they had these same kind of add-ons. I went in to negotiate for uh, for a, a van, and the second that I walked in the door, all the add-ons went off. But the problem is, is that these dealerships are still showing these add-ons. They're still trying to gouge a customer that is able to be gouged. Um, someone that's not going to go in and try to negotiate, they're going to go in and pay all these markups or whatever. But if you have that consumer that's interested in maybe uh, a Jeep Grand Cherokee versus a, uh, a Toyota 4Runner, if they're looking at those two things and they go to this Jeep Dodge Ram dealership and they have $3,000 of markups and they go to the Toyota dealership and they don't, well, then Jeep is losing that consumer. So it's not all on the shoulders of the CEO. It comes down to the dealers too. And in those cases, when, when uh, Jeep Dodge Ram, when they're losing those consumers, in that case, it's the fault of the dealer and really the CEO Stellantis. They have no control over that. Now, um, they can do things like uh, they can limit allocations from dealers who are charging uh, uh, crazy fees. But at the end of the day, they're not going to do that because these dealers, like we talked about earlier, are their customers. So they're going to allow them to do whatever they want to do as long as they're taking vehicles. Now, here's the problem. When those dealers hurt themselves by not selling a lot of cars, um, by uh, by adding all of these uh, extra things and trying to gouge the consumer, they're not going to be able to sell as many. They can't sell as many vehicles. They're not going to be able to take as many from allocations. And this is what we're seeing now, and this is what we've seen in the past uh, earnings reports. And this is why the shareholders are so upset right now is because all of this rosy, all this money that they made previously, well, it all got turned off very quickly. And I've talked about this a lot is where it seems like all of these dealerships have been able to take allocations, take allocations, take allocations until they can't. And if you imagine about all of these big franchise dealers, they're all roughly the same size. They're going to be able to hold 200, 300 vehicles. If you drive down um, the, the the highway, you see a lot of these, these franchise dealers. Now, some are, some are mega stores. They do volume. Some are tiny mom and pop shop. But most of them are going to be roughly the same size. So if you have all of these similarly sized dealers, they're loading up on inventories. Take Jeep, Dodge, and Ram as the example. They're loading up on inventory. Okay, their sales are, are slowing a little bit, but they still have space. They can take a little bit more. They can take a little bit more, take a little bit more. They all are going to get to the point 
roughly at the same time where, okay, they're filled to the brim, their sales have been suffering, and now they're starting to back off of their allocations. And this is what we've seen recently is that a lot of these Jeep Dodge Ram dealerships have started to pull back on their allocations. And this is all going to hit Stellantis all at the exact same time. This is what's happened in the last, what, three to four or five months. All these dealerships, they're loaded to the brim. They can't take any more cars. They shut off. When that valve shuts off, this is exactly what you see. Stellantis can stop. They have to stop pumping cars to these dealerships because they can't take them anymore. And when that happens, we see what we're seeing right now. Layoffs. Layoffs are happening. This is another big group that's uh, very, very upset with the, the current administration, the executive branch, um, <laughs> executive branch, the CEO, the C-suite of uh, Stellantis right now because layoffs are starting to occur. And now because layoffs are starting to occur, you're getting the UAW that's angry um, with uh, the CEO and what's going on now. Sean Fain, the uh, the president of the UAW, he's mad at every automaker at all times. So they can't do enough for the UAW to appease him. But this is just another branch, another um, segment of, of people that is is not liking the direction of what the current CEO is going. Um, so you're getting all these layoffs, you're getting production cuts. The pro production cuts have to happen because they can't keep making these uh, these trucks if dealers can't can't take them. Where are they going to stack them? And we've seen uh, lots of reports that in Michigan, we're seeing vehicles just stack up around these plants everywhere because they're nowhere. There's nowhere for them to send these, uh, these trucks, these, these uh, Ram 1500s, you go to Ford with the F one fifties. And then we have Chevy now starting to stack up on, uh, on their trucks. And it's, it's becoming a very big problem. Dealers have to cut their allocations. Production has to stop people lose their jobs and it all comes down to the direction that these auto manufacturers are going. And the first CEO to, uh, looks like uh, we're looking for the successor and it's a little bit too late and we still get to hang around with him for another year and a half. Um, if he makes it that long, but I would assume, um, as things continue to get worse over the next year, don't know exactly what his contract says. If he's locked into this position, um, uh, I would assume the shareholders are hoping that he's not locked into the situation. Uh, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see what how this plays out uh, for Stellantis going forward. Um, but uh, e either way, in a year and a half, this CEO is out, and I would look for the next CEO to come in and want to change things up, change the direction. And they're going to have to, because right now the direction that the company is going is not working. And we're seeing it in the numbers, we're seeing it in the quarters right now, and we're seeing it at these dealerships. Something has to change. To bring in this change, you're going to have to have a change at the top. Another big problem that uh, we're seeing with this company is a lot of executives have left. And I think there are going to be more executives that leave because they're not wanting to go down with this ship. They're not wanting to have this on their resume that they're on a company that's going down and they, they don't want to be a part of that. So they're jumping ship early. So they don't have to have this. So, okay, well, I was the CEO of um, Jeep whenever uh, it went bankrupt. I was the CEO of the American segment of Stellantis whenever. No, they don't, they don't want to do that. They're not going to have that on their resume. So when they see problems, they're out. And we've already seen lots and lots of executives leaving because they know that the ship's going down. They see the numbers. I mean, they see more numbers than we see on the quarterly reports. They're seeing the amount of dealers that are turned down allocations. Things are getting worse. Executives are leaving and they have to make a change. So in my opinion, I think them changing CEOs is, is a good thing. I wish that they could do it sooner rather than later. Um, but that's, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. If things get worse, maybe uh, there is a change that can be made uh, sooner. But he's already shown that he does not care about the American segment of, uh, of this company. And it almost seems, it almost seems like he's trying to run a lot of these dealers that are here um, into the ground. 
And really, he's uh, he's trying to make a product that consumers don't want. And I, it's all well and good a couple of years ago when dealers were taking everything. So you just make as much money as possible on the vehicles that you do produce. But now we're in a much, much different car market than what we had been. And you have to adapt. And I feel like it's going to be very, very difficult for Jeep, Dodge, and Ram to adapt to this new car market um, because they're just going to have to come up with new vehicles to actually get out to consumers, new vehicles that are way cheaper. And that takes years and years and years of development to be able to come up with something cheaper that people can actually afford. Um, so I think it's, uh, I think it's bad right now for uh, Jeep Dodge and Ram. And I think it's, I think it's probably going to get worse, but this, uh, this uh, CEO change, uh, whenever it happens, I think it's actually a good thing for the company.